Ohio. It's a state of the hardworking, the blue collar, the salt of the earth. Just good, all-American people doing what they need to do to get by and enjoying life along the way. So it's no surprise, it's also the birthplace of one of our favorite underdogs of all time. The Buckeye Bullet himself, Mr. Dave f***ing Blaney. The dirt racing, Ryan spawning, people's champion. Dave Blaney is a dirt racing legend. In fact, he's just an American legend. He's the kind of guy that's so damn likable you can't bring yourself to root against him. He could wreck your favorite driver and you'd just say, Oh, that Dave. I'm sure it was just an accident. The worst adjective that you can use to describe someone's pleasant demeanor is that they're nice. But Dave Blaney is just that. He's a nice guy. He's just nice. God, it just sounds so lame to say nice. But how did a nice dirt racing legend from the state that all the astronauts are from end up being one of NASCAR's greatest underdogs? Dave Blaney's career began on the dirt tracks of the Midwest. He grew up racing on dirt and eventually rose to the pinnacle of the sport. He was the All-Star Sprint Series Rookie of the Year in 1983 and won the USAC National Touring Championship in 1984. He moved up to the World of Outlaws shortly after and won his first race in 1987. Blaney then spent the next several years knocking off all kinds of massive events. He won the 1993 Chili Bowl Midget Nationals, he won the 1995 World of Outlaws Championship, and won the 1997 Knoxville Nationals. And as an aside, I personally, I don't know a lot about dirt racing, so if any of my info is wrong, please be sure to chastise me in the comments below. Childish insults sir, encouraged. So it's 1998, and Dave Blaney has conquered dirt racing. He's won all the big events, and a World of Outlaws championship. So he continues along the path that many racers in his position have. He goes NASCAR racing. Well, actually, Dave made his NASCAR debut in a cup race at Rockingham in 1992. He drove for Stan Hover? Hoover? And finished 31st. But 1998 marks Dave's first real crack at NASCAR. He signed on with Bill Davis Racing to run in the Bush Series, or now the Xfinity Series. Dave drove the number 93 Amoco Pontiac in 20 races that season. He won the pole at the Fall Charlotte race, earned three top tens, a best finish of sixth, and had an average finish of 23rd. In 1999, Blaney ran all but one race in the number 93. He earned four poles, five top fives, 12 top tens, and finished seventh in points, despite missing the race at South Boston. He also ran five cup races for Bill Davis Racing that season in the same number 93, earning two top 10 starts, but a best finish of 32nd. In 2000, Bill Davis moved Blaney's team up to the Cup Series full-time to join Ward Burton as a teammate. Blaney had a mostly down year, he failed to qualify for the second race of the season at Rockingham and had just two top 10s, which came right at the end of the year. He had an average finish of 28th and finished 31st in points. He also made eight Bush Series starts that year in Bill Davis's number 20 car, earning a pole at Charlotte and a pair of third place finishes. Blaney returned to BDR in 2001 for another full-time Cup Series campaign. The team also switched to Dodge and expected an increase in on-track performance due to an influx of manufacturer dollars. Dave had a much better season, finishing 22nd in the final points and tripling his top 10s to 6. He was clearly outperforming his equipment. Everything looked great for Dave heading into 2002. He seemed like a legitimate Cup Series driver who would start contending for wins in the near future. Despite his results with Bill Davis Racing in 2001, the team was plagued with sponsorship issues, so Dave signed with Jasper Motorsports to drive their number 77 Ford in 2002. Blaney had his best season that year. He finished 19th in the final points, despite having just five top 10 finishes. He ended up being quite a consistent driver, earning an average finish of 21st and having just three DNFs. In 2003, Blaney continued with Jasper and had several strong runs early in the season, leading to a 7th place position in points following Darlington. Speaking of Darlington, I know we all remember the greatest finish in NASCAR history, but do you know who finished 3rd? That's right, Dave Blaney. This 7th place points position is the highest that Dave Blaney will ever end up being in his Cup Series career. He will never again be in the top 10 in points. As the season continued, the team would be plagued by bad finishes, and Dave ended the season 28th in points, which is four top 10 finishes. So now it's 2004, and Dave Blaney is about to sample the strange starter lifestyle that we've outlined in our earlier strange starter series. He didn't have a ride lined up in any series that year, so he took what he could get. He returned to Bill Davis Racing to drive the number 23 Dodge in six cup races, including the Daytona 500, and had a couple of 11th place finishes. 
He even won the pole for the 2004 Nextel All-Star Open Race. He also drove the number 7 Dodge for Ultra Motorsports at Richmond in the team's final cup race and then got a huge break and signed on with Richard Childress Racing. Childress had originally hired Johnny Sauter to run the full cup season in the number 30 AOL Chevy. Blaney drove the car in 8 races with the best finish of 15th twice. Unfortunately for him, the team would sign Jeff Burton as a permanent replacement. He also qualified for Carl Edwards at the Fall Charlotte race and ended up starting the race before Edwards took over mid-race and Dave was actually credited with the 37th place finish. Dave also made three Busch Series starts for both Marsh Racing and Fitz Bradshaw Racing and made his Truck Series debut in a Bill Davis Toyota at Dover, finishing sixth. So remember when Dave subbed for RCR in 2004? Well, in 2005, he ends up becoming a full-time driver for the team. Jeff Burton was moved from the number 30 to the number 31 to take over the team's singular sponsorship. The number 30 was then renumbered the number 07 due to their new Jack Daniels sponsorship. Robbie Gordon was asked to stay with the team and was given the opportunity to drive the number 07, but he opted to leave Childress and start his own team, also the number 7. So Childress then decided to go with a seasoned veteran in Dave Blaney. Blaney drove the full 2005 season for RCR. He had a mostly down year with just two top 10s and a 26th place finish in points. In 2006, Richard Childress opted to move Clint Boyer to the Cup Series, leaving Blaney without a ride. So naturally, he returns to his former boss, Bill Davis. He signed on to replace Scott Wimmer in the classic number 22 Caterpillar Dodge. Now this was a very weird year for Bill Davis Racing. They were in the midst of a lawsuit with Dodge over fielding Chevys in the Bush Series and Toyotas in the Truck Series. Dave also had a history of pretty much fielding whatever manufacturer he wanted for his extra entries. Scott Wimmer had driven a Chevy for the team in the Cup Series on multiple occasions, despite the team being a Dodge team. To add on to this pile, Bill Davis had also signed a deal to one of Toyota's teams for their inaugural cup season in 2007, so Dave Blaney signed on to drive for a team with no manufacturer support. But he had a great teammate, right? Like someone who would help push him to be his best and challenge him on track? No, not at all. His teammate that season was Michael Waltrip, who had left DEI to form his own team. He also made a commitment to Toyota to expand his Busch Series and part-time Cup Series operation to three full-time Toyota Cup teams in 2007. So Mikey bought the owner points from the defunct Penske Jasper number 77 car and teamed up with Bill Davis for 2006. That's right, you guessed it, Dave Blaney's 2006 season didn't go super great. But to be honest, I think he overachieved considering the circumstances. It took him until the fall Richmond race to get a top 10, but he backed that up at Dover the next week with a second top 10 and finished the season 26th in points. But the thing that happened in 2006 that we really need to talk about is Dave Blaney's crowning achievement. During the year, he signed on to race part-time in the Busch Series for Braun Racing in the number 32 Haas Avocados Chevy. An incredible sponsor, considering this is way before millennials were like, you know, just devouring avocados on a daily basis. He could drive a Dodge in Cup and a Chevy in Busch because he didn't have any manufacturer commitments. He had a top 10 for the team at Richmond, but on Friday, October 13th, 2006, this happened. Man has never won in the Busch Series. It's going to lose a little bit here, but if, oh, he's got it. Kenseth he's got Lottos, it. Kenseth Kenseth gets Kenseth loose. Blaney's around. Blaney. Oh. Right, back it down, baby. You're the best. Dave Blaney wins a wacky race at Charlotte. <laughs> and the Lord looked down from the heavens and proclaimed, Dave Blaney shall win. And it was good. Dave Blaney was finally a NASCAR winner. I bet there wasn't a dry eye in the house, and even Kenseth fans were happy that their guy screwed up and Dave Blaney drove into victory lane. Oh yeah, and his Cup Series teammate Michael Waltrip finished second to complete the most unlikely 1-2 finish you could have possibly predicted. In 2007, Blaney decided to make a run for the Busch Series title in addition to his full Cup schedule. He drove the number 32 and the number 10 for Braun Racing, but abandoned his title bid mid-season after he fell out of contention. He had just 6 top 10s in his 23 starts. In the Cup Series, Blaney's team struggled mightily, juggling a brand new car and engine, not to mention the introduction of the car of tomorrow to NASCAR. He actually failed to qualify for three races after the team fell out of the top 35 in points. However, he did win a pole at New Hampshire. It was actually Toyota's first ever pole in the Cup Series. In fact, Blaney also won Toyota's first ever pole in the Xfinity Series earlier that year at Fontana. So Dave Blaney is a Toyota pioneer in NASCAR. He ended the 2007 Cup Series season with three top 10 finishes and a 31st place finish in points. In 2008, Blaney had a similar year in Cup. He finished 30th in points on the strength of two top 10s, but failed to qualify for one race at Talladega in the spring. 
So now it's 2009, and we enter a bit of a down period for Dave Blaney. He signed on to drive for Prism Motorsports in the Cup Series. They were an underfunded team that started and parked for most races. Dave qualified for 30 races, but only ran one complete race at Charlotte in May. In the Nationwide Series, he started and parked a couple times for MSRP Motorsports, ran one full race for the team at the Glen, and drove for Braun Racing at Charlotte, finishing third. It would be his final start in the series. In 2010, Blaney started out with Prism Motorsports again, having some incredible qualifying runs of 5th at Fontana and 3rd at Bristol, but again the team ran just one full race at Las Vegas. Blaney ended up jumping to front row motorsports during the season, driving both their number 38 and 37 cars. He also drove several races for Tommy Baldwin in the number 36. Both teams weren't competitive, but it was a massive step up from Prism, as these teams actually ran full races. For 2011, Blaney started all but one Cup Series race, driving mostly for Tommy Baldwin in the number 35 and 36 cars, but he also made one start in park for Jermaine Racing in the number 60 Toyota. At Talladega in the fall, Blaney drove Tommy Baldwin's number 36 to a third place finish, and kids got to eat free at Golden Corral. In 2012, Blaney drove three different cars in 34 starts. He ran for Tommy Baldwin in the number 36 and the number 10, and drove for Larry Gunsel in, in the number 37 for one race. He had an uneventful year, but he did have a very strong Daytona 500. He led six laps and finished 15th. But let's not forget that Dave Blaney came within moments of being the 2012 Daytona 500 champion. When Juan Pablo Montoya's steering broke under caution and he careened into an on-track jet dryer, serious damage was done to the surface of the track. A long red flag ensued, Brad Keselowski broke Twitter by tweeting an image from the backstretch. Don't text and drive, kids. Anyway, it really looked like the race wouldn't be able to restart, and Dave Blaney happened to be the leader. Now let's be honest with ourselves, we all love racing, we want to see more of it. But we also all wanted that race to get called so Dave Blaney and Tommy Baldwin would get that win. Unfortunately, the race restarted, and Dave finished 15th. Imagine how much more memorable this race would have been if Dave Blaney was the winner. It just brings a tear to my eye. 2013 marked Dave's final season as a full-time driver. He drove Tommy Baldwin's newly renumbered 7 car in 35 races, only missing Sonoma. He had an average finish of 29th, and finished the season 30th in points. But 2013 also saw a resurgence of the Dave Blaney of old. The dirt racer from another lifetime. Dave Blaney drove in the Truck Series' first ever dirt race at Eldora Speedway behind the wheel of Brad Keselowski's number 19 Ford. He made his way through the heat races and ran strong all night, but ultimately settled for a ninth place finish. So he actually ended up 3 for 3 in the Truck Series. Three career starts, three top 10s. 2014 will be Blaney's final season in NASCAR. He'd attempt 15 races with Randy Humphrey's number 77 team, making just four races, and then drove the final three races of his career for Tommy Baldwin Racing. Dave's final career start came at the 2014 Bristol Night Race. He qualified 35th and retired after 37 laps due to overheating issues. He finished 43rd, earning one point. When it was all said and done, Dave Blaney made 597 starts in NASCAR's top three series and drove for 18 different owners. He had some consistent years, but also several years bouncing around in uncompetitive rides. He's a true journeyman racer. He hung on for quite a while because racers love racing, even if their car isn't the fastest. Dave was never able to win a cup race, and had just one Xfinity Series win. But to us, Dave Blaney's legacy will always be that of the underdog driver you hoped would sneak into the top 10, and show the top drivers that he could be among them. You can still catch Dave at the racetrack every now and then, supporting his son Ryan's efforts in the Cup Series. Ryan is already an incredible NASCAR driver, and I just hope that people won't forget the career of the elder Blaney. We here at Flashback to the Track will never forget you, Dave. Your 2006 win will forever be a top 5 NASCAR moment for us. Dave Blaney, the ultimate underdog. <laughs>